understand what you're suggesting. Um, so I'm gonna repeat back what I think I heard. So you're, um, what you're wondering is, in, the, in a new aquatic center, why would we put two pools, right? One for athletics, right? For the, the longer, the colder sheet of water, I'll call it for that. And then a warmer sheet of water for our other uh, aquatic programs. Why wouldn't we just do one and then use the existing pool that we have and do the other, split it out, right? So maybe yes. have the existing pool be for our community programming. Yeah, that, that's my, that's is that my your question. question. Yes, okay, you. good. I just want to make sure that's what I heard. Or I think for the, is there a way to use the current pool rather than just all, all of that? Um, so let me answer this and then I'll yeah. go back to yours. So um, there needs to be some work to the current pool. I mean, the long story short is it, it needs up is 30 years old. Um, that facility just needs some um, major updating. And we are also looking at um, some additional spaces for other programming related to our, uh, our community programs that we offer. Um, you know, between our adults and our seniors and our, and our youth, we want a, an additional space for that. So that's what you're envisioning using that, that carrier for? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, that would involve a new building then? Or using the, the existing building that the pool is in to have that space? The latter. Right, so we <laughs> fill in the old pool and then repurpose that space for other, that other program related to the gym different. So, thank you. So, what would the cost be, do you know, to repair the problems with the existing pool? Um, I don't know that off the top of my head, honestly. So, I'd have to look at it. And repairing it, mm -hmm. um, I would not be able to use bond dollars to repair it. Okay. Repair would have to come out of our operating dollars. We'd like to keep those repairs down, you know, the that budget down the minimum so that we can spend it on, in the tough. I mean, again, I don't know if, yeah, yeah what is refurbished there? Is, does refurbished count as repair? Um, de depends on what's being done, right? So it's kind of a, it's a, a fine line between repair and renovation. Yeah. I mean, I guess in general, just the whole thing obviously is a very large ask for the community sure. to get behind and so I'm just thinking about are there alternative ways yeah. to address the problem. No, I appreciate it. The other piece to um, building a new pool is to be able to um, host more post-season tournaments on the athletic side, right? It require, our current pool is a 25 meter pool and uh, the High School Athletic Association requires a 50 meter pool. Um, so we'd like to be able to Oh yeah, I understand that. That's why I thought it could be the secondary pool for other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so now I forgot what you said. You I said something. Too. I said, hold on to that. I and I had an answer for it. Um, You're going to think of I'll it. I'll see if I can right? remember. But yeah, on the pool thing, like I was thinking, like don't, there's no way, I'm sure like taking the current pool building and, and making it bigger is not an option, right? That, that wouldn't be, I don't know if that would be right. astronomically expensive or maybe it yeah. wouldn't be considering you're looking at 55. Years. I don't know. Um, but the other piece of that too would then be that we would have to, athletic, those programs would have to go offline for one to two seasons. Right. That, right. Because so that, we wouldn't yeah. have a place for them yeah, to yeah, actually yeah. practice so or that compete. Yeah. Is there another way to do in the, in the new pool building? Um, is it, if it's just a temperature issue, do all, do normal pools, I don't know what you're assuming, do college pools usually have two options? Like yes. a hot, they do. Okay. Or five options or ten options. Yeah. I mean, yes. Five temperatures? No, no, no. Oh, I'm saying they have lots of pools. Okay. Yes, you need lots of pools for. Okay, I was That's like, at some point we're going to have to different temperatures, right? Yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Did we? I know, like, we touched on this in the last meeting, but um, I'm curious about that whole like population shrink issue. Like, how much has the population of Forest Hills schools shrunk? Because I am, like, I mentioned last time, like, I'm a little nervous. At what point do we say? Oh gosh, we just plunked 30 million into this school. Like one of them was 45 million apps. And wasn't that, was that not this, was that Cent Northern? No, that was Central. That was 45 million, I think. One more, I think. 41. Okay, so Central was the one, and that's also, and again, not at all like, oh, Jewel, you got this wrong. I don't. That was the one where the age of the building was misrepresented, correct? So it was more like 45 years because it was demolished. Remember that came up after the Oh, it yep. did, yeah. Yep. Part of that, the older, yep. some of the old section was demolished.
Welsh, but parts of it are still original. Oh, I thought that somebody yeah. had clarified that no, it was parts original. of it are still original that were the oh. original build with that space. Oh, interesting. The okay. Parts that remain out of the industrial arts area, the Hawks Wing, which was the original and the Okay, interesting. I thought someone at the last meeting said no, that was all redone. But anyway, whatever. This is minimal compared to the whole building. So let's say. I don't know what the numbers were. I don't know where they are. I've seen the shrinkage, but I haven't calculated it. So let's say we're looking at, gosh, one of these high schools is gonna go. Maybe it's central, you know, that's a lot of money to plunk in. And then eight years from now we go, well, we just, now we're not even using the building because, I mean, I lived through a consolidation even back in elementary school. School just went and that was it, it was over. So just, I mean, I think you can get the feel like some people are like, can we be a little bit more cautious here about money and what about this and should we really spend this? And I know you're not looking at spending it all at once. I'm just right. thinking right. about that. So has that has that been discussed and how to prioritize which school? Like, maybe, are you gonna look at pay years population and maybe we're gonna, let's go after the ones that need the least amount of money first? And, or how, I think you understand what I'm saying. I do, I do. Um, so you're right, that would be a huge community conversation when you talk about consolidating, right? Um, going from, I'm just going to throw something wild out there and this, this isn't anything that we've talked about, so I don't want any rumors going out that, oh, the district is doing that, right? Sure. But if we went down from three attendance areas yep. to two, yep. that would be a very big community conversation yep. that we would involve our community in, yep. right? And because that would probably be a very passionate conversation, I would just yep. assume. Um, so, you know, it's, you're right, I, we're not doing everything all at once, and, you know, we are watching our enrollment trajectory. Do you know where it's at now, what the percentage of where it was at the height? At the height? Mm -hmm. um, the height was probably when I started, and I'd have to go back and number memorize. Um, like gap, but we okay. have been declining. Yeah. I mean, like, are we down 25 percentage yeah. or whatever? I'm not asking for hard caps. Um, no, not that much. I okay. think when I started, we were, um, I don't know if we were quite at 11,000. I think we were maybe a little bit under that. I'm looking at someone who used to be our director of sure. yeah, sure. I, I, I think that you were probably close to 10,000 when you started. Yeah. That, that's yeah. everybody uh, youngest mm -hmm. through old, like grade K 12. School through K 12. Okay. K 12. I don't. Yeah. And that was how long? I have a question as a result. Um, that was probably 2012, <laughs> yeah. maybe. Yeah. Okay. So where are we now? Uh, we are at about 9,200. Okay. Um, okay. So her discussion actually raised a question for me. You've set aside money for each schools. Are these hard and fast earmarks? In other words, should a school close, will that particular bond that was earmarked for that particular school become invalidated? Or can the money still be collected from the uh, taxpayers? Well, let's say um, we close a school down the road, right? And we hadn't touched that, that school yet, right? And the, this bond was passed and we had $10 million set aside to do those renovations for those schools. Um, we would either not sell those bonds or wait for, you know, and hold them and maybe we continue to do more roofing and mechanical and paving with it beyond the year 2031, right? Or something like that. So we wouldn't necessarily spend it on a building that we're closing. But what I'm saying is, are these hard and fast earmarks, meaning $41.2 million is going to Central High and will only go to Central High. And if Central High should close, that $41.2 million is null and void to be collected from the taxpayers. Or is it, no, that $41.2 million will be distributed to the other schools? We could distribute it to do something else. I see. Yeah. Good question. Now I understand what you're saying. Sorry. No worries. All right. Website has a bunch of information. Um, you can also send an email to contact at fhps.net. That's out there as well on the website, so you don't have to walk away and try to memorize that. Um, we're happy to try to uh, answer any questions you have before November 7th. Yes? I'm curious, curious when you, <coughs> excuse me, the turf for the baseball and softball, mm -hmm. is that artificial turf? Yes. Yeah. Well, my thought for that was maybe there are career ending rules. Well, I mean, I know it from football, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's 
harder to get tackled or if you're sliding in baseball or what have you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess that's any more, you said more injuries, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you heard any. Yeah. Okay. So I think our also desire is cheaper that makes everybody want to go to Um, Actually, it's almost the same. It is almost the same right now. What goes into maintaining a baseball and softball field with conditioning everything and um, staying on top of that is almost the same as that thing that has like this annual cost. And remember, all of that annual cost for a natural field um, comes out of our operating budget. Um, so it takes away what's going in the classroom. But we are seeing uh, our neighbor communities are are moving to turf fields for their baseball and softball as well. Um, so they're able to utilize that field more throughout the year. In the springtime, our um, baseball and softball um, athletes and coaches are wanting to get out there as soon as possible. Um, but we know that if they get out there too soon, they'll actually cause damage.